my name is Sumit Arora, for those of you who don't know me, and I lead the service provider infrastructure engineering for Cisco, and essentially that comprises of products uh, in the cable access, optical transport, high-end routing, and access routing space. Uh, I have a, just a couple of slides, so I don't want to bore you with slides today. Uh, just want to talk at a little higher level around the network operating system and the strategy that we are uh, driving to there. Get your inputs and feedback. Uh, and then we will connect it to segment routing as uh, Clarence and team go through that. So essentially, just to give you a little bit of background, we totally get the fact that uh, networking over the years, as it has evolved over the last 30 years, has um, solved a lot of problems. We've connected the world. But at the same time, we've also added a lot to that portfolio in terms of hardware, software, and in terms of the complexity. Right? So a key part of the strategy at Cisco is how do we uh, simplify uh, networking in terms of its operations, in terms of its usage, and in terms of its ability to support more innovation. Right? And that is a big deal and a big uh, thought process behind our strategy. So we divided that into four major building blocks. Uh, the building blocks around ASIC, awesome and the best ASIC, the ASIC diversity, silicon diversity in the industry, that remains, right? Uh, industry demands that. We don't want all to devolve to one set of ASICs. So we will continue to build good ASICs that support innovation, that support price performance. Uh, it definitely, the role of the software and role of good hardware and the support behind it, uh, low MTBF, all that stuff is critical. That is stable stakes. So we will continue to invest in that and hopefully do a good job, right? Those are the building blocks and they drive a, a level of innovation. However, on top of that, there are three major pillars. First is the evolution of the networking stack. And this evolution is around how easy it is to automate around it, you know, APIs, uh, the ability to extend it, which means does it become a platform for open innovation, ability to add third party innovation in conjunction with it. So it's not just, we understand the world is not just about monolithic closed systems, but rather an open environment where our intellectual property or our contributions, the networking stack is there, but people can add to it, people can program around it, infrastructures can be totally, totally ruthlessly automated, so on and so forth. So clearly the network stack needs to go in that direction. The other big thing is, does the network move towards self-driven, self-operated, which means a closed loop environment. And this is where some of the building blocks come in. One is the visibility in the network itself, right? Uh, the days of SNMP and syslog and CLI, they were good for the scale of the networks we had, but as this stuff really, really scales out, which, it, which is already happening, uh, we can't operate the network the same way it has been done for years and years and years. We have to fundamentally change that. And that means, of course, that automation stuff that I talked about, but it also means massive streaming telemetry driven visibility, like visibility that is 1000x, something like you know, what a driverless car may have compared to a distracted driver. I mean, just uh, giving an analogy there. So that massive visibility and then harvesting that visibility for insights and then closing the loop in terms of traffic steering, in terms of network operations, security, many applications. So the building blocks, telemetry, APIs, segment routing, right? Together, these three, when they operate, you can do magic. You can do a lot of things in the network that were difficult to do, were not done, or were very manual in nature in the past. So I think that's the vision for the self-driving network. And of course, the open innovation, I briefly mentioned that it is the platform we offer. You know, if you take iOS XR, or Nexus OS or iOS XE, can you put your own agent next to it? Can you program? Can you extend the FIB if needed? Can you override it? Can you extend the func functionality where needed? So those aspects I think are important. So this is what we are invested in on the network OS side and our overall strategy for core networks. Um, we understand 
the boundaries are blurring, switching, routing, those things are blurring. So we, we get that. Uh, any questions or comments uh, on this aspect? You said that uh, things like syslog and SNMP are no longer viable. Sufficient. Sufficient, okay. That's a good description of it. I think um, viable is the more correct. <laughs> So what's the replacement you're suggesting to get the same information? Yeah. We still need the information absolutely. that we used to access. Absolutely, absolutely. And, so, uh, yeah. and the uh, announcement last week um, on the analytics, analytics system, system. Yeah. did not seem to cover that. Yeah, sure. So I think from a, uh, first of all, if you look at SNMP and uh, the traditional polling frequency, uh, the accuracy is between 5 to 15 minutes. Generally, the you know, if you look at some of the mega operators and the rate at which they are polling the systems, the OIDs that are getting polled, the amount of information that is coming out, generally in the 5 to 15 minutes of accuracy. Uh, what, we have, what we have built and actually shipped recently on, for example, on iOS XR is uh, streaming telemetry. So essentially, uh, everything in the device is modeled via data models and you can configure any of those objects to be reported out, streamed out. Uh, in an encoding that you want, right? And this method scales, it scales 100x, 1000x. The volume of data that you can get out of the device, massive. The variety of the data that you can get out of the device, massive. You not just function of what OIDs and, you know, those aspects that are defined. You don't have to worry about that. We just give you, hey, here is how the schemas are in our device. This is how we are working internally. Let's expose it, right? And then um, the velocity at which that data comes out, massive. We are already supporting 10 second granularity. So we believe that if we can harvest now, the big question is, you're getting all this, it's a lot of information, what are you gonna do with it, right? And that's where I think the next challenge is, the big data problem. How are we going to harvest this information? But that is our answer, I think. That needs to be integrated with tetration analytics. Absolutely, so tetration or other tools that we are uh, building have to, ingest that, process that, make it meaningful in terms of insight. WAE has to become more real time, maybe with telemetry data. Uh, things like, um, you know, uh, new, new tools like I think we are internally right now experimenting with network change automation, right? You know, health checks, pre-checks, post-checks, what if that was telemetry driven? Real time, but very complete, very, very complete, right? So those are the things we are experimenting with. Uh, on XR, are, can you confirm though, is, is everything streamable today on XR or was it just interfaces? I forget what I heard when it was first announced. And two, what about compatibility with iOS XE? You know, when, when should we expect to see similar, yeah. similar things yeah. there? So XR, every release, so XR was built with a SysDB inside. I, I mean, no reference to the other SysDB. It was built from day one with a SysDB concept inside. Uh, we call it SysDB, we've called it that for 17 years, right? So um, uh, this SysDB, uh, we, we, we built the software with about 2,000 plus schemas. Uh, so the software has always worked with a data store inside all the time. It was designed that way. It's actually a distributed data store, replicated. Now, the point is, uh, whatever is in that data store, we call that as the native XR model. And we are in the process, in every release, we are validating that through automation and saying, this is now available, this is now available. The only reason we are validating it is to make sure that our operational side is implemented correctly. It's more for bugs, it's not for architecture or design, right? So every release, and I can get you the latest uh, set that is supported, so that's XR. Now the other thing that is happening that we have invested in, in our operating system is what we call as any model any transport and any encoding. So any model means that when an open config model gets defined or an IETF model gets defined, or let's say you have a model uh, that you are interested in, we have uh, developed the infrastructure to just map our native to that. And that's there, right? So you can actually consume our data in a model that you like, which could be open config. So as the open config models are coming, we are implementing them and releasing them. So that's XR. iOS XE is on a similar journey. Uh, the first step has been an approach where anything that you can do through a CLI gets available as a synthetic model on iOS XE, so that is happening. 
and then the same concepts like open config and others will become available. So uh, the idea is the same data model you can configure two different OS so that operationally they become similar. So we are on the journey. I can share the exact timelines and XR we can share what exists today. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> okay. So I, as I said, I had only two slides, and I covered most of uh, the, this slide in my uh, update. But I just thought I'll give you a few more data points to remember. First is um, over the last uh, couple of years, we have really, really reoriented both on what we build, but also how we build it. And the most important thing in how we build it is to work closely with our customers, with our engineers in our customers, customer teams, our engineers, their engineers, and really focusing on innovation, which is derived from problems, right? So we rely on that tight bond to know of problems. Here is a problem that we have in operating the network. Here is a problem we have in how traffic goes through in the network. And then the best talent coming together and really solving that problem. So that how part uh, I really wanted to convey today and kind of say that, hey, we need to continue to build that and really, really that drives that drives innovation. We've done that with uh, John's team, John Leddy's team there and other teams. I think we need to continue that. That's important. So based on that feedback, uh, a few things uh, that are going on. First is we're giving choice in the data plane. Uh, essentially, some of the best software data plane implementations, we're very proud of, uh, you know, purpose-built, software data plane uh, implementation that we have uh, for NFV environments, very high performance, so we have that. Uh, embracing Merchant Silicon where we believe that offers the best price performance. And continuing to invest in Custom Silicon, or I should not even call it Custom Silicon, Cisco Silicon, uh, which uh, can offer diversity and also offer, um, uh, you know, price performance breaks, right? Because Competition is welcome in the industry, right? So that is definitely at the data plane level. And the software on top can handle any of those. So it gives the choice, right? And the software on top clearly focus on innovation like segment routing, so giving the best network stack, being able to take today's world of uh, networking to a future world, SDN driven, but in an intelligent and pragmatic way, right? That's what you will hear from Clarence. And then offering that programmability, offering telemetry, making sure the software is built with a lot of secure practice, and, and then that open environment for hosting third-party innovation alongside and being able to mishmash these things, right? And the other thing that we have added in software is modularity, which is Linux server style, RPM packaging, being able to add, delete optional packages, being able to thin the OS down if needed. So those are other capabilities we have added in the network OS layer, right? And everything for these, the key parts are API driven. We have APIs for data plane, we have APIs for routing service, we have APIs for ASICs, whichever layer we need APIs, the APIs are there, right? And so what does that mean? It enables an environment on top, which is an ecosystem, which can focus on automation, can focus on traffic steering, can focus on security, could be ours, could be yours, could be third party, it's the flexibility, it's the openness. So clearly that's where we're driven. And that's the fundamental message I wanted to give you. I didn't want to you know, steal the thunder from the segment routing team, but any questions on our strategy, any input, any advice? No. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think the more APIs that you offer, the better. That's what folks are looking to do more of now. So it's glad that you're adding more of that in and making more of it available because I think that's going forward for everyone. Absolutely. Are you looking at OpenConf, Yang, which Yang model sets? Are you looking at Yang specifically? Yes. Or are you looking at I2RS? Uh, Yang models. Um, and as far as I2RS is concerned, we do have some service level APIs that are similar to I2RS in terms of that layer, you know, the uh, routing layer. But you're not looking at I2RS Yang models, like the rib model and stuff like that. Um, I, I think, By the way, it's only the rib model I really care yeah, about. Yeah. Rib and filter. Yeah. So we do have some rib models right now. Uh, they are similar to I2RS, may not be exact. But as I said, I think the key message I want to send today is the way we have developed our infrastructure is that it's very easy for us 
to map our models to another. So we have a thing called Y Mapper. Yang uh, mapper. So, so, so you would just take the JSON? I can just map it, map it to you, whatever you want. So I, I don't want to say no. I want to rather say I have my models okay. native, but I can give you any model. I can give you open config model for BGP because it exists. If there is an I2RS model that we need to uh, show it, we can show it very quickly. It's very easy for us to do that. So it's, it makes the platform very adaptive. Idea, one of the things I didn't mention, but goal is our <coughs> software and ha software needs to adapt to your environment. And everybody's environment is slightly different. So that's why we made it adaptive. I have, oh. I have a, just yeah. a thought, idea, comment. You know, Cisco does a lot of testing internally. Yes. Right. And right now, there's there's a bigger drive to implement more robust pipelines. So if you want to make a change to the network, you know, do your pre and post change test and really test it from an application perspective. You could think of the application, you know, as a feature OSPF and BGP. It would be great to see Cisco like, release some of these types of tests that you do internally, that we can use them in our pipelines to say, hey. This is you know this is the same to Cisco RAN. So if it passes if it passes for us, then yes. again we're you know we're good to go. I am so happy you asked that question. Uh, uh, I think uh, you know what we have done recently is uh, built a information system database called CAFI Cisco Automation Factory. So uh, what we do there is essentially, you know, we have built routers for twenty years, for thirty years, sorry, right. and uh, so we know how to build one. We know how to test one. But what if we codified it, you know, and not just as a monolith, but as many selectable modules. Here is an OSPF test module. Here is a BGP test module. Here is a forwarding test module. Here is a traffic engineering one, whatever it is, right? Yeah. And we are adding all, A, we are automating 100% of our routing test plans, router test plans. In fact, our new routers, like the NCS 5500, entire test plan is automated. There is no... No right. ifs and buts. It's all automated. It runs every week. It runs every every day on our uh, line, con continuous integration lineup. And the idea is, I, I, while I won't open it, right now I didn't think of opening it up, just you know, Google it and you see it. That was not the intention, but I did have the thought, which is that we will open it up to our SE team and through them to our key customers. In a way that you could take it and run it in your environment, or you could critique it, we could update it, and run it in our environment. And I'm beginning to do that for a few customers. For example, uh, I won't name the customer, but one of the web players, their entire test plan is what they would do or what services would do. We automated it, and we are going to run it in our baseline every week. So anytime I'm giving them an image, I'm, I can say, hey, it doesn't need any extra additional tests. It's ready. So I'm he we are heading there, and we have the infrastructure to be there right now. So. Short answer, more than happy to share with you, but not openly, just to, you know, make it uh, openly yeah. visible yet. Yeah, the, the, the final piece of that would be VMs or VMs are not, but mock devices mm -hmm. be able to, in an offline manner, be able to do you know, sort of pseudo API calls against a device. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's virtual appliance, you know, maybe it's not, maybe it's just yeah. uh, an object and can code. Yeah. That, would be, that would be amazing to see I think this across, across platforms. This is another thing we can share with you right away. All of these uh, OSs have virtual platforms now. Um, XR has it, XE has it. You can do a lot with them. And API testing, absolutely. Uh, connecting them and doing some more, absolutely. So we should be able to do that. Now, but keying in on that is the ability to put together a, a test environment so that we can do continuous integration yes. with stuff on kind of network, network yes. ops. Yes. Okay. Versus DevOps, yes. the IT, Network Ops. Yes. To do that on a I got your basis. point. I got your point. I would love to partner further. I mean, you know, my email address, uh, I'm sure, can be provided. Uh, we can, uh, we can uh, partner on this stuff. That's my idea. I think we have a thin version of this, one of the OSs, which we can put 130 VMs on a single server now, and you can lit literally emulate an entire data center and run ops on top of it. So we can do that. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you very much.